Another little uh, quick video, um, very late one. <laughs> what was it? Half past in the half past twelve at night. Yep. The um, topic of today, though, is not reading PlayStation controllers, even though finally I've got it to work. Um, it's actually about timing, and more importantly, um, uh, timing of devices. Now. The reason the PlayStation controller is here is because I'm currently trying to read the analog joysticks because um, you'll see that it's affecting the uh, LED over there. Because reading the buttons is fairly simple. Once you've got the communication com uh, protocol made, which is at pretty much SPI, uh, you know, anywhere from 100 to 500 kilohertz, as long as you get the communications correct, um, reading the buttons are easy, you know. All you have to do is send it a command 0x1, no, 0x01, 0x42, 0x00, and then the next two bytes um, are your, uh, well, the next two bytes that you clock in are your uh, um, button data, which is like up, down, left, right, uh, more the buttons, and yeah. doesn't include the analog sticks unless you've got the analog mode on. Remember that. <laughs> I got confused by that. But, what I'm going to talk about is analog joysticks. Now, the reason I'm talking about timing is because I had a weird glitch. I could read the analog sticks, but um, this LED would constantly flicker. And then this over here, which is the serial output, is currently saying 125. That's just basically the um, by uh, the well, it's the analog to digital representation. But every time I circled that, it would. You know, it would change on the screen, but if I left it resting in the middle, it would sometimes go down to zero, or some, up to two five five, or sometimes just in the between. It was never consistently stable. Now, the way the communication between the PlayStation and the controllers work is that <clears throat> there's an attention line or device select line, and it means all your controllers in your console are joined together, and um, except for the attention line, which means you only need you only need what is it? One yeah, data command clock, um, and then what was the other thing? Yeah, and then a select an an, atten uh, an acknowledge line, and then an attention line, and you, you know the attention line is f one for every controller. What you do is you bring the attention line low to tell it the controller you want to talk to it, and that's basically because if you don't do that, it'll just ignore your uh, requests. You then send it. Um, like I say, 0x01 zero zero one or 1 and um, you know, clock it 8 times you know, at a frequency of about 250 kHz is what I was doing here and then if you let it, if you, it's what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to let it wait until the controller says an acknowledge, which basically means it's got the data or the command um, or you know, this is the end of the bytes Go, here's the next, you know, clock for the next ones, and um, that's basically what the acknowledge line is. I'm not using that here, you know, really I should be, but I'm not. And one of the problems I was getting was, like I say, the joysticks weren't stable, they would just keep jumping about, which was not nice. And you'll see now it's quite stable. The period of when it stops sending data and sends the acknowledge signal and then it starts again. You know, between the, um, well, sorry, I keep saying you know, and you, you know, and it's just one of those things I just say to, um, uh, to sort of, put, um, what's the word, try to think, you know, and there you go. What it happens is between data and the acknowledge, it's about 12 microseconds before the controller actually says, I've got the data, or I've sent the data, and then the PlayStation clocks it again for the next bit, and so on and so forth. Um, and what's happening, I wasn't including any time at all, so this controller was getting a command, not even, you know, another command to send more data, even though it hadn't even sent the um, acknowledge line. So what we've got in here, and excuse the camera, um, if we go up a bit, um, get into the frame, alright, so if we go up, here's my code at the minute. It says read PX pad pad number. Now I'm not going to go into details of what this entirely is, but basically um, this is the command, the actual uh, Arduino command I've made, and this is the uh, pad number of all basically what pin your um, attention line is on because you'll see the first big digital right attention low. 
Do you notice this? Delay microseconds 15. And then it reads it in, and then it delays it again. Then it reads it in, delays it, reads it, delays it. This delay, if I remove it, causes all manner of hell to come out, because this is letting the acknowledge time go low and then back high again, so that controller is ready to continue. And um, when you're talking about timing in systems, if the timing is off, you know, say um, a system is expecting to get a packet of data um, in such amount of time and then wait in it for such amount of time before getting another bit, if you go mess about with those timings, you'll completely confuse the system. Now, these have been designed for a specific timing. You know, the clock frequency can doesn't matter so much. As long as it gets a stable clock and it's got the times roughly in the right place, it'll be fine. But, the t you know, the period between sending packet bursts are very crucial because you see here, it's nice and smooth. And this is a PWM-controlled LED. That's why um, the Arduino can control it. I want to get um, a... Um, uh, what's it called? A ADC, no, a DAC, a DAC to um, run it on a project I want to do. But if we go over here, in fact, what I'll do is I'll delete all those. Well, I won't delete them. I'll comment out all those delay microseconds, and we'll show. You, well, I'll show you what it does. Okay, we're back, and the controller is back in analog mode. And for the reference, I'm not pressing the button. If I press the button, it won't turn off. This code is told to force the controller into analog mode and lock it. Um, a thing you'll notice is on some PS2 games is what they'll do is they'll tell the controller turn on the analog mode and lock it so you can't turn it off because the games require you use the analog sticks um, and basically those same games you can't use the digital pad so imagine a PlayStation controller without the analog sticks and that's what a digital pad is anyway that's what that is so that's not me turning it on and off so it's nothing to do with that I'm pressing the button um, I'll, you know, you, if you want to figure out how to do that, you have to turn it into config mode and then tell it to do things. Really, you should go onto a website. Um, I'll show you the website very quickly. Um, if we go into this website, it's got all the timing diagrams. It's great. Um, there's the URL. I'll try to hold the camera steady for you. It's store.curiousinventor.com guides to PS2. And that gives you a list of all the commands you can send to the controller and what they will not all of them, but you know, the most used ones and what they do. Great, because it means you can read the analog sticks, you can read, you can actually c control the vibration mirrors and this, and I have done that. It's quite nice. Anyway, now, let's have a look at that LED. Oh, can you see that? It's flickering. This is fully on, that's fully off. What's going on there? Flickering again. Shall we get the, um, get the, uh, what's its name, serial prompt up? So there you go. Pad responded. So we're getting this data, which is currently saying 126, but you see occasionally it glitches a little bit. You see where the numbers change? It was, wasn't doing that. Now, uh, there's another library I've got, which is called the uh, PSX library, How Creative, which basically reads the digital buttons. That works perfectly fine, so why does this work perfectly? Why do the buttons work perfectly fine, but not the analog sticks? I don't know. But I do know that the timing is very um, critical, not critical, very important when you're reading the analog data, or even the uh, motor data, because sometimes that can screw up with the... Uh, things so it just goes to show that and you know timing because that's all that was was those um all that um stopping that is those uh commented out um where is it yeah commented out um oh are they am i even on the right bit oh i might have deleted them they're all on the commented out uh delay lines so yeah a uh, quick little information about um delay you know timing on these things because if you if you're not getting the right signal from something you know I try adding a delay of maybe of 10 microseconds 5 20 25 you know keep adding it as long as it's sensible until if something starts happening or something starts changing because if it does then you know your timing's wrong and you know if you're looking at waveforms and it's got a space and then do it something to do try you know putting that space in there and seeing if it fixes the issue and um, this whole project you'll see in a uh, future video. I'm not going to tell you about it or what it's um, what this is all for, but you might be able to guess. Anyway, thank you for watching.